Today I'm going to wrestle with body painting one of the most powerful comic book mutants of all, X-Men's Dark Phoenix, Jean Grey. For the first step, I'm applying an FDA compliant red makeup. Using the chest stencil, I'm loosely applying black makeup to determine the placement of the chest piece. Now I'm base coating the chest, arms, waist, and legs with the color gold. With the same chest stencil, I'm going to fill in the edges using black. And now with black, I'm painting the rest of the chest and neck. With a shield, I'm making the gold edges very crisp. With my custom stencil and black, I'm airbrushing the Phoenix buckle. And now I'm making everything a little bit more realistic by adding drapery and wrinkles throughout the body. With a white water-based makeup and a fine brush, I'm creating cracks on her face. Using a shield and brown, I'm creating depth and realism to the cracks. With the release of the new X-Men movie, it makes sense to paint up Dark Phoenix. One of the challenges today is making the cracks in your face look like they're glowing. And there you have it, one of the most powerful and unstable X-Men ever. Hopefully you stay on her good side. Today I'm going to be body painting arguably one of the most powerful X-Men superheroes, Storm. With a shield, I'm making sure the edges are nice and clean. I'm painting the cuffs on the arms and wrists. Now with a shield and black makeup, I'm applying the base for the rest of the outfit. Again, using a shield and photo reference, I'm adding details all over the outfit.
And now for the full effect, we're gonna add a white wig to the model. And we're gonna put some white out camo eye special effects contact lenses to clear out her pupils. There are so many versions of Storm, the hardest part was picking my favorite pieces to feature. Today we're gonna to be doing a Wonder Woman body painting using airbrush makeup. So the first thing I would do is I paint the base coat. I put the base colors down and I don't worry too much about hard edges. I just get a basic color put on the skin. The red I'm using and the blue that I'm using is a little bit brighter than the modern Wonder Woman red and blue. For the next step, I'm going to apply some edges using a shield. These are some of my shields. This is one of my favorite shapes. For the skirt and the top, it's important that I have a distinct separation between the skin and the outfit. These are stencils that I used for Wonder Woman. This is the chest piece and the W that's on her belt. Once that's done, I begin painting some details, some shadows. When it comes to making three-dimensional body painting, you have to have knowledge, usually from life drawing or lots of practice, or at least reference on hand, to show you where lights and shadows exist on a three-dimensional form. For this, I know it's going to be lit in the end from many directions, so I don't want to confine her to that, only that one direction. One of the things that I notice body painters consume themselves with is perfection, and it's, it's nearly impossible to make anything perfect. On things like the arms and legs and the smaller details, it's less important to make those perfect because the focal point is usually the torso or the face. For this body painting, I'm flying through the legs and arms and headpiece and making just a suggestion of shapes of where they should be. The highlights I add at the end is what really gives the body painting pop. And without the highlight, it's not quite three-dimensional. So as you can see as I'm painting, these highlights really bring it to life. Once the model starts moving around, I can look at him or her as if someone else painted it because they bring it to life in a whole new direction with their body movements and their posing and everything. And I can appreciate it as if I didn't do it myself. And I think that's what enables me as an artist to not cut my ear off. Wonder Woman is one of my favorite superhero characters for sure. I have a wife and two daughters now and I relate better to women. So I love anything that shows women and empowerment. With the release of the latest Avengers, today I'm going to take a stab at body painting Tony Stark's Mark IV Iron Man suit. First, I'm starting off by putting a base coat of gold everywhere that color exists on the body. Next, I'm applying the base coat of red using a shield to block off areas I don't want it to overspray.
Now using black, I'm going to add details and shading throughout the entire body. Next, using a pre-cut stencil of the arc reactor, I'm going to apply this onto the body using white. Using circle stencils and white makeup, I'm painting the repulsors onto Iron Man's hands. Fair skin helps the makeups be more vibrant. In this case, the red should really pop. And there you have it, an Iron Man Mark IV suit at a fraction of the cost. Just don't go trying to fly away now. Today we're going to be painting Carol Danvers, Captain Marvel. I'm so excited about this movie that I wanted to paint this character. First up, I'm using a water-based metallic blue makeup. I'm carefully applying this color with straight edges specific to where I want everything to be. In order to get these crisp edges, I'm using my shields. I'm doing this because I don't want this blue to mix with any other colors on the body painting. Using my reference, I'm going to do the same thing now with the color red. Because the star on her chest is such a focal point, I'm going to render the base coat of that now before I get too many colors onto the skin. One of the challenges of this body painting is making sure to keep the colors separate. If the red goes over the blue, it's transparent and that would make a purple. Now using various pre-cut shields that I've created based off of the actual design of Captain Marvel, I'm going to apply gold makeup. Really cool to see the costume come together once the gold is added. Now using a dark gray makeup, I'm going to add shading and details throughout the body painting. As I'm applying the shading and detail, I'm making sure to stay true to the reference. I'm keeping these details minimal but suggestive to the final look. If you're ever going to take a stab at body painting, make sure to use makeup that is FDA compliant for use on skin. Not only is it safe for the model, but it works better than anything else. It's always a lot of fun to replicate comic book characters, especially these strong female leads. The model is perfect for this body painting. It's fun to see the body paint come to life through the model. She really brings it to action with all her crazy poses and energy. This is my first time painting this look, and I'm really impressed with the way it turned out. Thanks for watching everyone, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell for the newest makeup transformations from Beautywell.